Looks like you found some trouble. All right, who needs killing first? Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Agents of Mayhem, Pride of Babylon. Agents of Mayhem is from the Saints Row universe, the classic slash popular video game Saints Row, which is accompanied by Volition and Deep Silver. And Academy Games and Apollo Games went ahead and made this board game variant of that, of that game. This one here is a tactics game and you're basically going to be playing on one side as the agents and on the other side you'll be playing as the Legion. The game plays from two to four players, takes about one to two hours to play, and is for ages 13 and up. Once you've selected which faction you're going to be playing for, you're going to then set up a scenario based on the different Mayhem booklets and, of course, the, uh, <laughs> this, uh, uh, what do you call it? the, 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 the Legion booklet. Yeah, the Legion booklet here. And there's the rules for the game as well. Each scenario is going to come included with how to set it up and the fact that you're going to be utilizing 3D models for the different terrains. This one here is a four stacked building or four story building. You'll be using die to roll to challenge your opponents. There's different scenarios you can take place in. Whether you're going to be simply trying to secure locations, stopping certain characters from getting across the board and perhaps retiring. There is a lot of comic value in the game. There's a lot of uh, destruction and craziness that's going to take part. This has the feel of the basic video game, what it's partially not as, I guess, not as spicy as I suppose the game itself is. But anyway, we're going to take a look down below. I'll show you everything that comes included along with the different expansions that you can potentially get, such as Agent, or uh, such as August Gaunt. That's one of them you can get, and there's Oni and Sherazad, and etc. etc. These are all the extra characters that can be picked up. And uh, there's a bunch of different miniatures, like this wonderful big golem miniature for the Legion. Anyway, let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you what's included in the game, and then I'll tell you uh, the basics of how to play. Agents of Mayhem, the Pride of Babylon is all set up. We have a small setup here. This is actually not one of the campaign or missions. We just kind of set it up just to show you what it would be look like, as well as we have the two different sides here. We're going to be playing as the agents on one side, and then over here is going to be the... Uh, the bad guys. I keep forgetting what their names are called. They're the Legion. And they'll be putting them over here. Usually the, the Legion will also have a specific bad guy board uh, that simulates a single character, whereas these guys, uh, the good guys, will each have their own unique character. Uh, let's go ahead and go through everything that we see here, at least for the most part. Most of the characters, or all of them, are going to have one of these boards here that illustrates what they are, what they do, and a nice uh, explanation side on the back, which tells you how they all function. All of the characters have one of these guys that you can go ahead and look through. Additionally, there's expansion rules. If you're gonna be playing with uh, one of the, which is one of the Firing Squad expansion, and then this one is the Gaunt expansion. So that uh, you have a little rule book for an additional uh, things you might run into that might have, so you have some questions. Uh, there's also going to be the player reference guide here, which will show you the rules and the summary of basically uh, positive and negative effects, bonuses from aim weapons, weapons, etc., etc., attack penalties, and then back here is a bunch of other symbols that will kind of address any questions and concerns you might have. Uh, over here are all of the player boards in which you're going to be <laughs> basically taking for each character you have. And all the characters are uh, going to have the basically, they're going to have different stats and whatnot, but it's the same type of board, which I'll go ahead and explain down below in a moment here. There's also a bunch of these small game trays that will facilitate characters as well as tokens that you'll be utilizing. There's a lot of additional advanced rules, which give you advanced tokens for the game modes, which I'll kind of briefly go over, as well as, of course, additional characters and whatnot. There's even extra space in here. In fact, my main box of the game, I have all the expansions all fit into it as well as there's still a little bit of space left over. These are all the tokens you'll be utilizing in the game over here which will include the bonus uh, extra tokens for the advanced mode. There's going to be different scenario objective markers and one way points, all kinds of different things here which you can use as well as of course a key and some nuts and bolts which will let you set these 3D elements up so that you can uh, continuously make different terrain boards and most of them are going to have a front and a back and then of course a bunch of extra miniatures and the golem miniature which I showed you previously for the legion. These of course are going to have additional tokens and etc etc especially these little cubes here which you're going to be utilizing for your boards. Now this is a fake setup but if it were real it would tell you there's a certain place in which you're going to be placing your heroes down. The boards are going to be uh, little squares here to indicate where you're going to be able to move. There's going to be telling you where you're going to be able to place these little markers 
markers, whether they be crystal markers or the basic scenario markers. One will help for the campaign, one's going to be mainly for the specific mission you're going to be going for because each mission you're trying to win based on points. And in this basic campaign, your objective is, as a bad guy, is to try and control areas more than your opponents and vice versa, as well as scoring points by defeating each other in certain ways. The game is going to come included with die. There's white, yellow, and red. You'll be utilizing them for fighting, basically. There's things like a pushback, basic damage, there's aimed damage, which can trigger certain abilities, and then there's specials, which also can trigger certain abilities, as well as blanks. The white are the weakest die, the yellow ones are the next strongest, and the red are the best, so it's many red dies you can get is going to help you out. Additionally, there's a ton of different boards over here, which will facilitate all the rest of the campaigns. There's probably a good like 30 or so of them that will give you more structures, as well as the main box of the game has a bunch of these extra little poles you can set up. Each player is also going to have a deck of cards that will facilitate refreshing during the refresh period of the game, as well as their mayhem deck, which in most scenarios you're going to get one to start with, and you can gain more mayhem cards with the cubes you pick up, but everybody's going to get a starting deck for each of those. Uh, the bad guys will get a certain number of characters on each of their boards, so the Alpha Squad and Bravo Squad, which you see here, have two different units, and it's going to be supplied on the battlefield as well, as making sure that you have all of your speed, focus, and your tech fully sorted with cubes and they are different colored cubes to sort which type of cubes go where it's very easy to tell where they're going to go for the good guys you're gonna be able to select your characters i've got hard track here and i've also got hollywood and it tells you how many shields how much armor speed focus and tech as well now as you can see there's an extra space in the board and that's for mayhem which you're going to be getting by basically choosing which board you want to activate active boards will get tokens eventually tokens will turn into cubes and you can use mayhem cubes to buy mayhem cards each of the characters will also get specific abilities and or weaponry or upgrades that you can place in these slots here. And of course the tokens as well that can go here as well, which will basically make your characters stronger as you progress throughout the game. Uh, there's a bunch of additional cards we have over here and some uh, additional boards for other scenario based play. So that is pretty much what we get in the game. There's quite a lot to go through, but for the most part, that's what you're gonna be getting in the game. Let's go ahead and I'll show you down below here how to basically play the game and to give you an idea of how back and forth works. Okay, so we're back to the bottom of the board here and I have my character set up just like previously. I'm just gonna give you an idea of how to run through things. And with this little handy dandy sheet, it'll tell you how the game works. There's going to be a draw phase, uh, action phase, and a refresh phase. Uh, during the draw phase, you're going to basically be drawing one of these cards here and these cards will tell you what uh, refreshes on the boards that you don't utilize during your turn and you'll be utilizing, you'll be putting those tokens down on the board after you finish. So we'll go ahead and start with the good guys here, choosing which one they want to activate. They'll also get one of these cards to decide Okay, so there's going to be two uh, cubes I can place on any uh, whatever board I don't choose to utilize, and then one shield will activate as well. Keep this hidden so nobody sees it. And I'll go ahead and choose uh, Hard Tack right here. Hard Tack is this character here, and he is now able to make actions. Uh, there is a primary action, which is going to have this little crosshair symbol on it, and you can use one of those once a turn. Uh, there's also the Sprint, which could also be used once a turn. You could choose which we want to utilize. There is a Jump, which is a bonus thing you can utilize, and and a dash as well with a check mark. All of the abilities and movement is going to cost you, and it tells you what it costs you in these areas here where the hand is present, two green cubes in order to utilize his shotgun, one green for sprint, one for jump, and then a green and a yellow for a dash. So on his turn, if he wanted to, he could simply choose to, uh, let's see here, maybe he wants to sprint I suppose which would give him additional movement so he'd be able to move based on his movement and he would go a certain amount on the track if he chose to sprint he would spend one of those green cubes and then he could move again but it doesn't let him attack on that specific turn um, of course jumping down below is okay but when you want to jump up you're gonna to have to be utilizing the specific jump ability which tells you on the board that you can jump up to two levels as well as you can ignore uh, terrain difficulty for three specific movements. On the boards here, there's explosion spaces. There's going to be spaces that have a red outline, which will indicate shields, which are basically going to be difficult terrain checks. To get through them, it'll cost three. The other way that you might suffer difficult terrain is if you're next to a, an enemy unit and you want to get out of their zone of control. To move out of that zone of control is going to cost you three movement as well. And if you were in range of a unit, you could choose to, instead of move or sprint, 
or dash or jump, you can simply choose to attack them, in which case you're going to spend your cubes. So let's say that I went ahead and moved, just I moved from here to here. I spent my cubes, uh, at, well, and then, I, and then I'm going to go ahead and spend my cubes, which are two speed, to use my shotgun. Well, what's interesting with this gun and how all guns work in the game is there is a amount of die you're going to be getting as well as what die you choose, what you got, die you're going to get, uh, what type of die you're going to get based on the range. And so in this case, to shoot this guy, it'll be one, two, three, four, and five spaces away, which means I'm going to use white die. And it also says how many die I can utilize when I'm fighting against a specific unit. And I think in this case, it's three die and the three white die. And I'm going to go ahead and roll them against this unit here. And as you can see, this unit here has a armor of one and a health of one, which is two. And in order to defeat it, I have to actually roll two hits. If I only roll one, that doesn't hurt the unit. When you ever have to defeat enemy units, you have to defeat them thoroughly. So as you can see with this unit, there's a shield and a, um, uh, there's a shield and an armor, which can be given to units as well as health. You would have to add up all those and then beat the sum of that. Uh, the snipe trooper has three, the swarm troopers have two, and the blitz troopers have three as well. So if I actually did do this, I would actually defeat a unit. That would actually get put back into the bad guy's reserves if I actually rolled that. Additionally, when you beat units, you'll gain victory points, and you'll push yourself up on this track here. There's other ways you'll gain victory points, which is controlling certain territories and completing objectives. And if the other team actually gets victory points, you would actually move yourself down this track up to the point where if the enemy unit has success so you get a victory point and you're at zero, it'll flip and now it becomes the enemy's track and they're going to gain victory points that way. So it's pretty useful as that works. There's also certain things like percussive armor, certain shot bonuses and whatnot. You'll read your cards and it'll give you some bonus of some sort. Like for instance, this character over here, Hollywood, he's got a, uh, what's this one here? A photo, it's, it's a jump basically, which also lets him get damage, can do some damage there. Pretty, pretty useful. But that's it, once you went ahead and activated your main ability and used any of your sprints or jumps or dashes, then that's going to end your turn. And you're going to then go ahead and flip this over and give the other character or characters that you have these bonuses, whether it be one shield. So for instance, if this character's board looked like this, then you're gonna to get to put two cubes of any color that you want on. So I can go, oh, I'll put a yellow down, I'll put a green down. And then additionally, I can go, oh, I also get one shield, so I can put this shield down as well. And you do that for all of your characters. So as you can see during the first turn, it's not going to help you all that much. But it's also a good way to indicate how long the game's going to go, because once these decks run out, that's going to signify the end of the game. You go ahead and discard this card. You'll be utilizing it again. And then you'll take a new card for the next round, so you'll know what you're going to get for the next round. And then we go to the enemy's turn. And the enemies function the same way, but a little differently. They're going to be using their cards to give themselves reinforcements at the end of their turn and in addition when they choose to select one of their boards they can activate the characters on that board so for instance if they chose to activate alpha squad here they would have the hell troopers and the snipe trooper to utilize and based on what they chose to do as far as actions go like if they did that dark matter rifle they could choose themselves plus two other units to attack with them based on these ranges here and that would kind of activate all the units uh, this is the snipe trooper and you would only be able to activate one snipe trooper which luckily i only have one anyway but it tells you what you can do whether it be a dark matter rifle repositioning yourself uh, a grenade or even cloaking yourself the bottom of the cards are going to indicate the cost in order to summon units so basically to uh place them down the board when you have enough cubes in the reinforcement area and cards from the specific deck allow you to do so it's going to be these black ones here this hands that will allow you to do that then you can go ahead and activate more units but nevertheless they're going to function the same way you're going to be able to move your units a certain amount and then you're going to be able to fire a certain amount based on the exact same rules as the other player and of course you're going to draw one of these cards here you'll activate this for your other board and then just like the other player you'll draw another card for the next round of play and this will be a secret for them and you're going to go ahead and hide that so that you can choose which one to use next and generally you're going to have more than just two of these so there's going to be multiple different boards that you can go ahead and replenish at the end of each of your turns and like I said previously, once these decks run out, that's going to signify the end of the game, in which case the player with the most points on this tracker here is going to win that specific mission, and then you could progress to the next campaign if you'd like. Some other cool interesting things about this game are you're going to start with utilizing these white die whenever you have a poor attack, but there's ways you can gain bonuses. For instance, if you're behind an opponent, they are not going to be able to see you. They can only see in the sides of them, 
the left and the right hand side as well as anything in front of them. So if you're behind them in any way, you'll get a bonus to your die attack. So for instance, if you had three white die and you got a, and you had a bonus here, bonuses, so a plus two bonus would let you get rid of a white die. And this is a plus one bonus and then this would be a plus two bonus. So you can actually get a white to a red die with bonuses. And just the same can be said with obstacles. So for instance, if I'm higher than you and you're trying to attack me and you have the range, I would have range advantage, which would mean you would have a significant disadvantage, a negative in fact. So if this was with your normal die roll, which would be amazing, you would actually have to go down two points. So you go ahead and go drop this down to this, and then you drop this one down to this. And that would cost you for having to shoot upwards, as well as of course behind certain difficult terrain and whatnot. So that's basically how die rolls work and how bonuses can be added throughout the game. When you're standing next to a location, if no one else is around in that area or zone of control, you can flip it over to your side and you'll gain control of that area. And you're going to want to hold control to certain areas throughout the game at the end to score bonus victory points to determine whether or not you're going to win the game. And that is pretty much the idea of the game. Each of the different scenarios are going to come with different boards and different setups for you know, up to four, even maybe five stories of play. All of these different cubes are utilized for different things. Shields have to go first and are easily replenished. Armor would be next. And then whenever these guys take additional damage, you'll actually remove uh, spaces on the board and place down red cubes, which kind of debilitates them to a certain extent and uh, you're going to basically lose uh, spaces to place on the board up to the point where they actually have to fall down if they take too much damage and this is how the red cubes are used mayhem when you have two of them you can use spend them to draw a mayhem card and these have specifically overpowered abilities that will help you throughout the game you can use them based on the characters they're associated with and uh, they will definitely do some serious damage to the legion um, the other thing about this game, I suppose, like I can talk about, is there's a ton of additional decks of cards I haven't even got into. There's certain things like different Campaign 5 and Campaign 4 cards that will allow you to progress throughout the campaign, giving your characters new benefits, new bonuses, new abilities, and increasing your knowledge and skill at playing this game. You could always choose to play with new players and just go throughout the campaign as you choose, or not. That's kind of up to you, along with all these additional tokens. So, for instance, these guys here. These are all advanced tokens in the game. They'll actually be placing down your boards in these areas here which will give you even more benefits, uh, useful things that you can do throughout the game. Anyway, that's, I think, a good enough description of Ages of Mayhem. There's a ton to go through, and I'm sure I didn't cover everything, but hopefully at least enough to give you a taste of how this tactical game plays. Let's come up and I'll give you my review. So let's get into Agents of Mayhem Pride of Babylon. The first thing you think about with this type of game is uh, how well does it match up with the video game Saints Row. And I can answer that to a slight degree. I have played one or two of them, um, the video games that is, and they are of course Saint Row games. They have got some sass to them. And this board game has sass to it as well. I mean, you've got characters here giving the middle finger. This guy probably can't see, but he's giving the middle finger up. Uh, some of the dialogue has changed to like exclamation points and like money signs and whatnot to make it more mm, accessible to a, a younger audience, I suppose, but still not that young because there is some language in the game. There's some some, some crude humor, I suppose you can say, that, that does exist throughout this game mode. The game is a tactics game at heart, but it's also extremely mechanical. So for those of you who like mechanical styles of play, this one's going to have a lot of that. Uh, additionally, I guess a negative point to the game is probably the fact that it takes a bit to set up. Uh, these boards are uh, not challenging to set up, but you have to look through the rule book and see which way they go and which side they go on. And then you have to have a little screw and screw all these guys in and they pop off and on, they have multiple sides to them, which is all good to one extent and uh, challenging on another extent. Uh, additionally, which is kind of cool about this game too, is when floors blow up, you actually remove them and certain floors will have certain HP points, which means that they might fall down, floors might come down, floors might be removed, all that kind of stuff. There's little it's points on the board here that have little explosion markers, and that's ways to destroy the board here. Uh, you're going to have these... Uh, tiles or not tiles here these player boards here which have nice insertion slots so you can go ahead and put cards in to give you bonus bonuses as well as these up here that give you bonuses as well your base boards are all going to be different each character has their own unique abilities as the way and the way they function on them is going to be different even at the top here some characters will have no shields or less armor or more armor and more shields or a certain amount of focus tech and the 
uh, mayhem, etc., etc. It will also, uh, they're all going to be fair and balanced as to the d different types that you can have, but so, you know, they'll probably all have like 15 spaces you can place them down or 10, and there's just going to be a, a differentiation based on where and when you can place them down. Uh, there's different squad boards, Alpha and Bravo squad, etc. You're going to be able to place your different minions down, and the, playing as a bad guy is still very similar to playing as a good guy. It functions theoretically the same way with some unique key twists as the bad guy utilizing different characters multiple characters and uh, attempting to use your reinforcements to get new characters as opposed to re refreshing your HP your characters as the agents are going to eventually fall down or go down because they've spent too many turn they've hit gotten too many hits on them whereas the bad guys are simply going to remove your units and then build up to be able to place new ones down from the boards you've selected to place the units down on Additionally, there are all these custom die. I think there's 12 of them in total. And they are the white, the red, and the yellow die. They're really cool the way they function. Some of them will have no effect in certain scenarios. There's the knockback, which actually can push players off of the board to an extent. There's the aim shot, which can provide benefits at some points. Other times, it's just a basic hit, just like a hit would be. There's a special, which if your character has a special, it's going to be of, of some use. Additionally, these die, like I was saying previously, can be upgraded. So if you get up, if you are running four of these white die, and you get an upgrade of two because you're two... Uh, you're above the units that you're shooting at, so you've got the, the high ground, and again, you can go ahead and dump a white die, and then you're going to get a red die, because it boosts one of your die by plus two, which is a really interesting and unique aspect to the game. There is a lot of content in here, especially if you like playing a campaign-style game. This screams campaign. It begs you to play it from the beginning, which is a tutorial, all the way to the bitter end, which we have not got to. Uh, but as you play each of the different scenarios, the different tutorials, you're going to learn new things about your characters, you're going to have a new storyline, you're going to have new things that you can attach to your characters, and then of course the side that wins will get benefits as to the side that loses, so it has a nice arcing path of change, as well as advancement in how the characters function and their capabilities, making you a stronger powerhouse on both ends as you play farther down the line. There's useful things that you're going to include as the game goes on, there's a ton of different tokens which gives a bunch of replayability and the fact that with this game you could make your own scenario up after you get a good enough understanding of how to play the game so for those of you that are mechanical tactics players this is going to be the perfect game for you because it gives you everything you need there's really cool bad guy characters too there was one character that grant played but i like gaunt because gaunt has the ability to gain basically followers people who are cheering for them and he, I mean, he can utilize those characters which is really cool actually then there's also a golem character that you can summon utilizing certain cards that popped up on the board one of the good guys actually has a flying drone and that drone is able to be used over and over again i think it's fortune i think she's the one who has the drone and the drone doesn't do much damage but it stuns characters and with a stun then fortune's able to actually pelt that character down because she gets bonuses to characters that are stunned there's a lot of combos in this game as well the components are high quality everything in this game is screams high quality game when you place it out there all the cards are linen and very nice all the boards are very thick and sturdy and will last a long time they went above and beyond with the double-sided aspect of the boards allowing you to have multiple different placement for multiple campaigns and just so i can give you a small idea this is how many additional tiles come in the game for even bigger areas and there are quite some large scenarios in this game and there's an extra like i don't even know 200 cards that i didn't show you that can be accessed throughout the game uh, depending on how far you get to the scenarios I had a lot of fun with this one. My positives are, of course, the high quality. The attachment to the Saints Row is really cool. The fact that it's got some sass to it. The fact that it is a strong tactical, um, tactical tactics game in which you're basically making sure you do everything correctly and the better you make your turn go the better you're going to do and it rewards you for your successes and it throws you off for your failures there is a little bit of luck which of course involves the die rolling but that is for most tactics games and of course the fact that there's two different sides that function differently but yet if you switch to one or the other it would still play just fine for you the negatives would probably be the setup for the game, people who don't like mechanical style tactics games, and people who just simply don't want to have to go through all the rules, because there is quite a few rules in this game. I'm sure that you probably couldn't even play this game, even after I explained probably what seemed like about 10 minutes of uh, coverage as to how you could play the game.
Nevertheless, though, if you like Saints Row and you like tactics games and you want something that's going to last you quite some time in a unique campaign style that is going to progress your characters as well as advance your knowledge in how to play the game, you should definitely check out the game <sighs> Agents of Mayhem, Pride of Babylon. I think you guys will enjoy this one. If it's right up your alley, go ahead and take a look down below in the link in the description to go ahead and pick this one up. For those of you who backed the Kickstarter campaign about a year ago or so, it is now probably mailed to you or if not coming very, very soon. Hopefully you had a little fun with this preview. And as always guys, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. I'm gonna bleep out the finger thing, even though I actually didn't do the finger.